tenants of law in there to go seize the phone or place him under arrest with a search warrant. I don't know why we're wasting all this time. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Who, who, you say Tim Cook should be arrested for violating the Patriot Act? Absolutely. I mean, they, they, the law was enacted for that. What are we going to say to the new victims if some of the people on that phone commit an act before we can stop them? I've been doing counterterrorism for 20 years. Time is of the essence all the time. So what, what, what about the civil libertarians who are arguing, no, we can't let the government do this? How would you answer them? Well, that's all okay unless uh, their family is at work one day when terrorists strike. And Bingo, right, right. It's nice to talk about these things in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a glass jar, like all of these civil libertarians do. Everything's in a glass jar at Harvard. But look, we know that they were on the run. They were calling people. The FBI's diner found out who they were calling. That's the first rule of an investigation. Find out who they were calling, right? Those are the accomplices who are, who are planning right now. Especially today, we find out that some... Uh, nuclear material disappeared in Iraq. What do we want, a dirty nuke to go off and Tim Cook will be given an award by the ACLU? We got to remember, that, Dr. Savage, these people were dressed to escape, unlike many terrorists that uh, we're dealing with. They had the body armor on, they fled right away. They weren't doing this on their own. They had help. We know that they had to have had help. I, I can't believe that we just don't go forward. They get a warrant for his arrest and go in there and put him in the... Uh, Put him in handcuffs. Now, you're put, saying put Apple um, Inc. CEO Tim Tim Cook in prison, right, for violating the the judge's order? Isn't that contempt of court? Well, everybody will be sorry if something happens in the interim. Well, you know, don't we have to be apologetic and the tears will flow? No, but I want to ask you something. You worked in counterterrorism. I am not an expert in law, but I know a little bit about it. Isn't Tim Cook in contempt of court right now? I believe he is. I believe that they, if they, they have the order from the judge, they should go and enforce the order and stop playing around with them. Why are they treating him with kid gloves? I thought they were all equal equal before the law. Well, okay, Dennis, you're a counterterrorism person. Let's go back to Judge Scalia. Do you have any questions about his death? Do you think we should drop it? No, we shouldn't drop it. I actually did 31 years in law enforcement, uh, the last uh, 20 in counterterrorism. There is not a case that I know of when something like this happens that an autopsy is not ordered and not done. It's, it's bizarre what's going on. You don't want to be a conspiracy theory person, but it's absolutely bizarre, the set of facts that is here. And the pushback from the family surprises me also. Uh-huh. Yeah, the, the, the family jumping in on the side of let's move on, there's nothing to see here, it immediately raises some questions unto itself. And that's why the, uh, the, you know, the, the personal cover-up, not even the political, starts to ring a bell a little bit. In the case of somebody that's been ill, God forbid, with cancer, and they're under their doctor's care, and their, their time is limited, when the police then go and that person passes away, their attending physicians that have been treating so-and-so for such a long time, it was only a matter of time, and there's no foul play, and the doctor can sign the death certificate. In this case, we have none of that, and it screams for an autopsy. And the fact that you said the other day about the bodily fluids all being disposed of, it's just one thing after the other here that, that throws up red flag after red flag. And Obama jumping in the breach a day later saying, I'm not going to appoint a moderate. I'm going to railroad a fanatical leftist. He said so. Well, I think before the poor man is buried, I think that Sunday that uh, all that rhetoric shouldn't come from anybody. I mean, the family. All right. The more the well, I, lo I love these calls. And when I get New York uh, detectives or ex-detectives, counterterrorism, I feel like I'm dealing with reality. You know, I, I just the way it is. I mean, it's like a reality show on the on the Savage Nation. Thank you for listening so intently and calling. Just got this from my publisher. For those of you who are interested, Kate says, "Congratulations, Savage! Diseases Without Borders came out as number nine on the New York Times list the first week." And notice, I didn't even promote the book. Do you notice that? I didn't hawk it. I didn't tell you to go buy it. It's only an ebook. It's number nine, week number one on the New York Times list. Why? Because it's a timely book. It's an inexpensive ebook, Diseases Without Borders. It's about how you can stimulate your own immune system in plain English. Many of us think we know, oh, I'll just take vitamin C. What does he know that I don't know? All right, do so at your own risk. All liberals, please do not buy Diseases Without Borders. Please, if you're a liberal, do not, do not at all ever buy any of my books if you're a liberal. Do not buy Diseases Without Borders. Number one, you know everything. Number two, you know how to protect yourself which is with drugs, sex, and rock and roll. So what do you need to know about fortifying your immune system? You figure drugs have done it for you. 
rampant sex has done it for you and rock and roll has done it for you. So what do you need to learn that I don't that I already that I know that you don't? Nothing. WJR Rick, welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Hi, Michael. Yeah, I just wanted to comment on the Tim Cook situation. Uh, the fact that an Apple phone was used as the vehicle uh, that these guys uh, were calling on, it strictly speaks to the fact that's why the government is soliciting Apple. The, the encryption algorithm is not proprietary to Apple. Anybody can get it. You can load it on an Android or on a, uh, uh, an Apple product. Um, the technology doesn't currently exist to decrypt the data. So tell me again, why is Apple resisting then? I don't know that they're resisting in the sense that they're, they're resisting the government so much. I think they're resisting in that they don't have the technology to decrypt the phone, and they'd have to dump significant resources into developing it. So it's going to cost them. It will cost them what? I mean, what will cost them? I'm sorry, I'm not asking the right question. Yeah, it'll cost them dollars, resources, personnel. Uh, like I said, the technology currently doesn't exist. Huh. Interesting, interesting. So they, don't, they just don't want to spend the money? I think that's part of it. I think it's a resource thing. Wow. Thank you for that call. So it's cheapness. Again, the bottom line. The bottom line. Here it is. Ebook bestsellers, nonfiction, number nine, Diseases Without Borders by Michael Savage, Center Street Book. Suggestions on boosting your immune system to protect against viruses being introduced into the country. All right, that's fair. That's fair. That's all. I didn't even I didn't promote the book because it's an important self help book. What would you like to talk about in this hour? KKOH Reno Scott, go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Hey, I think the reason uh, Tim Cook's uh, not doing this and uh, fighting it is is that he's supporting Obama. He, Obama helped with the LGBT issue that Tim Cook came out as being uh, gay. That's fine. However, now he's paying him back by not covering it up. Obama's been supporting the ISIS and everybody by not fighting it. This is how he's doing well, it. You're not implying you're not implying that the terrorists were calling the White House for instru instructions, are you? No, 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 no. Just Tim Cook supporting Obama for you know his help the other way around. It's just a payback. Well, there is a quid pro quo. There's no question Obama and Tim Cook are uh, very friendly. That's the same is true with Facebook, Google, Microsoft. They're all friends of the president. They're all very, very intimately uh, associated, and that's why they get away with the tax charges. I mean, you got Bernie Sanders screaming from the rooftops about companies evading taxes. Wouldn't you think you'd start with the biggest tech giants who are getting away with uh, tax evasion? I would, but... Yeah, you, you would if you didn't have uh, Lao Tzu in the White House. I'll be right back. So now we've got Apple saying that for the sake of privacy, we're not going to help the FBI unlock that phone. And I don't buy it at all. I don't buy that at all, not for one second. The health department who owns the phone gave the FBI consent to search the phone according to the motion, but the FBI has been unable to bypass the phone's passcode, the passcode lock, because they fear that its operating system would destroy all data on the phone after 10 failed attempts, right? So in its motion, the FBI says Apple should be able to turn off the device's auto-erase functions, allowing the government to submit test passcodes on the phone without the risk of destroying the data it seeks. And yet Tim Cook is defiant and says, no, my company, Apple, will resist a federal judge's order to access encrypted data hidden on a terrorist cell phone. So what do you make of this? I think it's a big story. It's a privacy story on one hand. It's a right to find out who they were talking to on the other. And by the way, I mean, you know, you talk about, are we talking about this in a bubble? Radioactive material stolen in Iraq raises security fears. That's a brand new story. It came out today. Stolen last year, no less. Now, we're told every day by various intelligence agencies that we, we should expect an attack, expect an attack, expect an attack. I love all the old fat men in security. The vigorous ex-warriors who come back from the military are put in the back of the bus in these security agencies as they are in Congress, just like what re Republicans did to various others who were elected. They put them in the back of the bus. So 
we have radioactive material missing in Iraq last year. We have a stupid company run by a defiant, arrogant man who won't help the FBI crack the code. Maybe God knows what they'll find on that code. KLIF, Robert, what do you think? Which side are you on on this issue? Dr. Savage, I believe that these terrorists do not, are not allowed or afforded the benefit of our constitutional rights. They are terrorists, they're foreigners, and they don't have the right. We need that information so we find the rest of the terrorists and get them. You're right. No, you're right about a number of things in what you just said. Even if they were American citizens, once they cross the line, and become terrorists. I don't care how many First Amendment Cretans they dig up from NYU or Columbia or Harvard. They have abrogated their rights that are afforded to members of a civil society. They are animals. They're lower than animals. They're the worst form of humanity. They rape, they kill, they murder, they blow up children. They have no rights whatsoever. We have rights, and we have the right to demand that Apple comply with the FBI in plain English. Back for more on the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's amore. amore. Lighten it up, Mike. When the world Think about autopsies, like heart attacks, cover-ups, dead phones, amore. Nevada brothels, Godfather. Forget about Apple, forget about pears and plums. I'm a foodie, by the way. You know, I'm obsessed with food. So I see this report on the Drudge Report. I had to jump at it during the break because I just ate a sandwich. I feel sick from it. I always get sick after I eat. That's how I know I've eaten. It's in the old buddy hacker thing. Unless I get sick after I eat, I don't feel like I've eaten my fill. Robert's laughing. I was brought up that way. In other words, unless you open your pants and you gag, uh, then, you know, then you know you've eaten. That's the way it was in the, in the old world. That's why they died at 49 when they came to America from overeating. But I can't get over it. I mean, that's how I was raised. If I eat like a Northern Californian, there's no worth, it's not, it's not, not, not worth living at all. I don't know how these guys live. They run, they drink mineral water and eat sparingly. I, I imagine I look at these thin men running around and what they eat for breakfast, probably very safe foods. Yes, dear, don't put any of this on it, don't put any of that. I mean, look, I'm a health guy, but there's a limit. So I read this article. The Parmesan cheese you sprinkle on your penne could be wood. <laughs> and I have sensed this for years. I mean, some people I know would buy those containers of Parmesan cheese. I would never eat it. I always look at it, felt like pieces of wood, right? If I don't eat cheese to begin with, I'm allergic to it. But when I did and I loved it, I would scrape it on the, you know, great, great, great for the kids. I raised them with food grinders. That's how obsessed I was. That's why they're healthy. So they look 20 years younger than they are as opposed to... Uh, some brands promising 100% purity contain no Parmesan at all. Can you believe this? They paid a surprise visit to a cheese factory, cheese police, in rural Pennsylvania, and they found that they were doctoring uh, the cheese with cut-rate substitutes and such fillers as wood pulp and distributing it to some of the country's biggest grocery chains. Can you believe this? <laughs> it just shows you that it, it pays to be like my aunt, who when she went into the butcher shop, in the summer, and he would show her the steak, and she would say, grind it up, and he had the grinder in the, in the freezer. She would bring a fur coat in July and go into the freezer with him because she knew he would substitute cheaper meat for it. Do you know that food adulteration has been known since mankind started selling food to others? In ancient Rome, they had people who weighed things, right? They had, they had, they had inspectors of weights and measures in ancient Rome because they, they were crooking people. <laughs> Let's see the craft one in the... Oh, Kraft at 3.8% wood. <laughs> Cellulose is a safe additive. And an acceptable level is 2% to 4%, according to the level. I'm a cheese technologist. The cheese heads versus the knockwurst heads. Uh, essential everyday 100% grated palm from Jewel Oscar was 8.8% cellulose. <laughs> While Walmart store inks great value 100% grated palm registered 7.8%. <laughs> Whole Foods, I love this. Wait. Whole Foods 365 brand didn't list cellulose as an ingredient on the label, but still tested at 0.3%. Kraft at 3.8%. Mmm. All right, look, you can't blame the companies in that regard. Well, you can and you can't. 
because they buy it from a, a wholesaler and they throw it into the container for them, private label. This is a big story. It just shows you the health hazards.